What's up folks, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail, and today I'm diving into my favorite MMORPG of 2022. Now we're halfway through the year, we're into basically the end of July here, and I play a lot of games with my, just with my brother and I, with the gaming community, and with our multi-stream team, running around with Nathan Napalm, Sparrow, Kel, Vendini, Maduros, uh, I'm missing some people in there, um, Bounty Code, so on and so forth. Um, if I missed your name, I'm sorry. There's a lot of people that I play with these days. Um, so I play a lot of games. And I have traditionally, when asked this question, what is my favorite MMORPG of all time, I always say Lord of the Rings Online. And that hasn't changed. That is still my favorite MMORPG of all time. But I do have a game that is a clear winner for the 2022 slot, and it's going to be a title that some of you are going to cringe at. You ready? And I have an explanation for why this is, so you're going to have to stick around for the whole video, because I, I do have a lot of reasons for this. My favorite MMORPG of 2022 is World of Warcraft Classic. I know, I know, it's controversial to some people who are like, but Tim, you're playing P99 and EverQuest and EverQuest 2 and Lord of the Rings Online and all of these other games. And you always say how much you love EverQuest and P99 and EverQuest 2 and Lord of the Rings Online. How is it possible that you find World of Warcraft Classic to be the best MMORPG of 2022? Mm, there are a lot of reasons. I'm going to dive into some of them in today's video. But the number one reason for me is because it's something I'm unfamiliar with. So it's like a new game for me. I did not play World of Warcraft when it was live. I was busy with EverQuest 2. And I did dabble a couple of... I remember the very first time I dabbled in World of Warcraft was around the Burning Crusade. I want to say we maybe did three, four weeks, um, and um, didn't stick, and tried it again years later by myself, didn't stick. Chris and I tried it right after the movie came out, because she wanted to test it out, and we, we got the trial version for her. It didn't stick, not because we weren't having fun, but because we were busy with other things. Um, then when Classic dropped for the first time, I played for six months, and I had a lot of fun. Um, the only reason I stopped was because I wasn't in a raiding mentality at that point in time, and so I, I, I went away and, and was like, I'll go do other things. And now we're spinning back around because Wrath of the Lich King is coming, and I have a lot of community members, and then Nathan and my brother and, and other people who have never done Wrath of the Lich King. I've never done Wrath of the Lich King, and so it got us really excited for something that's like a new game for us because we've never actually done the content or seen it, whereas all the other games I play... The exception being Lord of the Rings Online. Um, I've done the content before. I'm playing it for nostalgia's sake and for my community and to have something to do with my friends. Um, and we cycle through those games. Every time there's a new TLP, TLE server, Legacy server, whatever you want to call it, we circle back around and we do these cycles for three or four months. Lord of the Rings Online, I've been playing through content I've never seen before for about the past three months. Because I went through Rohan, now I'm into Gondor with my lore master, and I am loving it every minute of it i stream that game on tuesdays by the way every tuesday at 5 p.m central i start and then we play with the community i digress make sure to tune in for those um and i think that content is some of the best i've ever seen in an mmorpg ever lord of the rings online again my favorite mmorpg of all time i'm i'm almost four minutes in let's talk about above and beyond the fact that world of warcraft classic is new to me Let's talk about some of the things that make it my favorite game of 2022, above and beyond the fact that it's new. Of course, this is the point when I do my call to action and say, if you like this video, here's a few things you need to do. First and foremost, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update like this. Because we are playing a lot of World of Warcraft. It is becoming our primary MMORPG this, this fall. We have a recruitment video up. I'm going to put it up here. So don't forget to check that link. You can join us on the Peggle server. Um, above and beyond that, if you want to support me as a content creator, you can do that in a couple of ways. One, you can drop a super thanks on this video down below. Pick your amount. It's great. Cup of coffee, a Ferrari. I'll leave it up to you. You can also join the Adventurers Guild, which is our membership option here on YouTube for $2.99 a month. We do a lot of cool perks for members only, audiobooks, Lotro Chicken Coop builds, fun stuff like that. So check it out. And of course, you can always join in a live stream. I stream every single day, mornings and evenings, and you can do super chats and stickers on the live streams directly. And of course, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash wine and hermits 
which is the world I'm building with my wife and my brother. It's that map behind me. It's the world of the weave and the void. And we are the Wandering Hermits, the three of us. And we also have Nathan Napalm working with us. Becca, and, uh, Becca is a Sparrow and Bounty's daughter doing artwork. Lots of cool stuff happening there. We live stream the 5th edition campaign every Sunday night. We have a point-and-click adventure game coming out later this year. Yeah, that's the call to action. You gotta, you gotta stick with it, ladies and gentlemen. Like that's that's what YouTube's here for. It's a marketing platform. So let's talk about all the reasons that I'm having so much fun in World of Warcraft Classic. First, it's even though there is a lot of solo content, and you can do that content on your own, and you can level up a character all the way on your own. We have a hundred people already in the guild, and that's before we ever even really made our announcement that we were officially doing anything because we were waiting for them to officially launch the uh, launch date and they did two days ago and as a result we all know September 26 boom so we have two months to get characters up to 70 and go but we've already had you know I think we've we've gained a few people in the last few days since I did the recruitment post but we had 92 people when I made that video so we've gotten another eight people into the guild since then and more are going to be joining as we get closer to the date I know a lot of people are waiting for the actual pre-patch to hit um, Nathan's going to be doing a recruitment video. That'll bring in more people. Um, got a lot going on there. So even though it's single player, the fact that we have a big community around it and we're having a lot of people who say that Wrath of the Lich King is their favorite expansion ever, and also just the fact that every time we want to log in and do something, there's people who are genuinely excited and who want to be there and who are having fun and, and helpful with the quests and who have great memories of that time period of World of Warcraft... In a lot of ways, it makes it feel like when we're playing a traditional EverQuest 1 or EverQuest 2 a progression server, the difference I would note is that whereas with EverQuest 1 and EverQuest 2, t people tend to burn out after about three to six weeks, people haven't been burning out on World of Warcraft Classic. We've been going for several months now, and people are still going strong. Like, we haven't lost the... We haven't seen the drop-off that we've seen with the other nostalgia games. And I don't know if that's because there's a lot more to do on your own as opposed to only group based content but there are some factors at play which intrigue me from a development standpoint but also as a, as a player standpoint so yeah never seen the content there's a lot of cool stuff to do uh story wise um but i'm having a lot of fun with community members and it's great to have a supportive team who are always ready to go for dungeons and everything else S something else i really appreciate is i know they didn't do this in live i know in live they added a matchmaking system, which is one of those things where I understand the need for it. I understand the pros and cons for it. I am not against it because in a game, let's say Star Wars Guild Republic, these days, you're not going to get a group unless you use the matchmaking system. That's just the reality of it. Final Fantasy 14, you're not going to get a group without the group finder. So I get why the matchmaker exists in modern iterations of games, but I'm really glad they took it out for... Um, the upcoming Wrath of the Lich King and the fact that it doesn't exist in Classic and, and the Burning Crusade Classic as it is right now. Because it, it adds not a lot, it adds a little bit of social element to it because you can put up in the in in a in the Looking for Group Finder what you're looking for, but you can also go to Looking for Group Channel. I don't think we've ever had more than 10 or 15 minutes go by trying to find people for a group. Um, it's usually pretty quick. If we don't get someone from the guild, we usually find somebody who's a pickup and we can go do stuff. Um, so that's been, it's been very nice to be able to see that even though we don't have a matchmaking system, we can still find people. And a lot of that is just because the population is so high that there's not an issue with, with not being able to find people on our server. To go back to the way these servers used to exist years and years and years ago, the population was a lot smaller because the population density couldn't be as high because of server technology. But where we've come... You know, where we've progressed in the modern era is that we can have much larger populations on these servers, which means we don't necessarily need a matchmaker to help us find people. I don't understand, and Nathan has said this during one of our live streams. We had a good discussion about this, I think, when we were, when we were running Nomergon a few weeks back. I don't understand the people who say that World of Warcraft is easy. I really don't know where those people are coming from. Because a lot of us have never run this content before, even though I did Dungeons in Classic, I'm, I'm now getting towards the end of the Classic content and getting into the, the Burning Crusade content, I'm starting to do stuff I never did the first time around through Classic. And the content is not easy. It's not it's overly... It's not like EverQuest P99, where 
you know, if you if you you know glance away from the computer screen for ten seconds, you know, you cut your whole party's dead because you took your eyes off the screen. It's not that level of difficult, but it's also not overly difficult. Like if you pay attention and you take your time, very important here. If you take your time then we have not found it to be overly challenging, but we have definitely found it challenging enough. We're having to conserve mana. We're having to do resource management. We're having to worry about food and drinks and potions. We're having to do creative things with crowd control. Um, we're having to worry about, you know, AOEs. We're having to, you know, it, there's a lot going on and it has not been easy mode. If you've been tuning into our Thursday night multi-stream uh, events, those are when myself, Nathan Napalm, Maduros, Itador, and Sparrow get together and play through on our static group on Thursday nights from 7 p.m. onwards, central time. Um, those have not been like easy mode encounters. We're definitely doing content there that is, I don't want to say that it's like I said, it's not super difficult but it is challenging enough that we we are focused for those several hours that we play and and we feel sufficiently challenged and i'm looking forward to to more of that the other thing is just that i'm i'm and i know that they've had a lot of time to to and add additional polish to the classic experience because it's not the same as it was when it came out you know 15 years ago 20 years ago whatever it was this game blows me away sometimes how even though it's a stylized art style, you know, stylized game and it has, you know, what some people would say cartoony graphics, um, stuff is incredibly polished. And there are little things that you just don't pay attention to unless you're really taking the time to look at it. And it's like you've got animations that are exceptionally polished. You've got VFX that are incredibly well done. You have little fluff details like we were running around the other day and there's like these potions on a table and they're like little glowing effects and bubbles and you know it was the it was this little stuff that you don't notice unless you're paying attention to it but it adds life and vibrancy to a scene the music and i did a soundtrack i did my top five soundtracks top five, top five mmorpg soundtracks like last year lord of the rings online was up there vanguard was up there but but blizzard uh world warcraft came in on the list because world, uh, world warcraft has one of the best soundtracks i've ever heard and when you're in some of these environments, that soundtrack is so subtle sometimes, but it adds a whole nother layer to the zone that you're playing in. And they did a great job with the themes for each zone and area. So when you it does really add another layer to the game. Um, Storylines, I'm, I'm not entirely sold on some of it because a lot of the Quest Hub stuff, I absolutely abhor Quest hub grinding i really don't it's the one thing i hate about all games and it's no exception here that gets really repetitive a lot of the quests are fetch quests which i really detest but in between there you'll get things like um doing the oldamon quests as an example and you get to the end and there's that disc quest which is like this hologram and you're getting this detailed backstory of like the dwarves and where they came from and i remember the first time i saw that i was like not to mention the indiana jones component of that that's another thing. Easter eggs. World of Warcraft has so many Easter eggs to so many franchises that hit, you know, like if you're if you grew up with these things, it hits like you, you see it. and It's like, oh, man, Indiana Jones. Oh, man, that's Star Wars. Oh, man, that's this, that or the other. It's, it's so well done. Um, but at the end of that, when you're going through and, and you get this huge, long lore dump, that's the kind of stuff that I thrive for when I play, which is one of the reasons Lord of the Rings Online for me is my favorite MMORPG of all time because it has that lore factor. So when I'm playing Lotro, it's pages upon pages upon pages, which I know turns some people off, but I get pages, like novels worth of dialogue to read through, and it's exceptionally well done dialogue, especially for the epic book quest. I'm not talking fetch quest. I'm talking the epic book line that leads you through from the prancing pony. Like right now I'm helping um, in West Gondor. I'm doing stuff and I'm following in the path. I've just got out of the path to the dead and I've been doing a bunch of stuff. And I'm basically following in the footsteps of Aragorn as, as they came out of the path of the dead and, and they're on their way to Minas Tirith. And I'm in the, I'm in the wake of that right now. And it's really cool. Like the, the writing has been exceptional throughout Rohan and it's just gotten better and better and better. So some of the writing in, in, in World of Warcraft is really good. Others is kind of boring, but I do enjoy, um, 
the the lore dumps when they happen and that kind of keeps me looking ahead to because each hub i kind of feel like each hub even though it has a ton of quest qu fetch quests it has each hub has a really good lore quest related to what's going on in the area it also doesn't hurt that i have maduro's playing with me 90 percent of the time and he's like a walking encyclopedia on all things world of warcraft and this was something i never knew about world of warcraft was that how rich and deep the lore is for this game and I don't necessarily get it all from playing through the classic experience, but because I have someone like him in the group who's explaining the greater details around each area as we go through. And like, this is why this zone looks like this. And this is why this ship is over here. And this is why this thing is, this castle looks like it is over here. And this is why this dungeon exists. That helps me understand that, okay, there's a lot more going on here. If I had played the game like he has and like really sunk myself into it and, and played all the expansions, and everything else, then all this lore is there i just didn't know about it and so that's really cool for me to see how much lore actually exists in the game and how i'm getting snippets of it as we go through i've heard that and i haven't hit it yet i haven't got to the burning crusade my mage is right at 48 almost 49 i'm about to hit the burning crusade and i've got two months to get through the burning crusade before i get to wrath of the lich king dropping um and um i've been told that burning crusade because there's a there's a there's a more linear storyline to the burning crusade as opposed to the first game um and then we get to the wrath of lich king it's another linear storyline that's the kind of stuff that really excites me when you have you know fetch quests and things to level up but then a linear storyline that's taking you through the dungeons and the raids to the raid encounters that was why i loved everquest 2 uh the storytelling in everquest 2 is top notch because it, it did that exactly you had fetch quests and things to level you up but there was also the signature quests and, and things the main quest line that was reading leading you through the raid content which gave you this sense of you know you're affecting the world and you're participating in things with the gods and everything else which makes you feel like a true hero as opposed to just going out and leveling where, where you're still just sort of like a peon so i'm getting all of that from world of warcraft classic and also i think the sense that it's just comparatively speaking um Going back to the whole sense of we haven't seen the drop off that we see through other games, um, there's a huge population. I see people talking about how World of Warcraft Classic, the Burning Crusade Classic. I, I call those the same thing. I know people are like, but World of Warcraft Classic is different than Burning Crusade Classic. And, eh, they're all classic, right? Um, everybody talks about how Classic has more subscribers than retail does right now. I don't know the facts behind that. I don't know the numbers. If somebody has those facts and numbers, feel free to drop them down below. But I'm really enjoying the fact that there's so many people playing. Like everywhere I go, there are people. That's something that I don't get in any of the other progression servers that I play. EverQuest 1, EverQuest 2, there will be a huge population during the first week or two of the game of that launching once you're beyond the initial two weeks everybody's already got a level 50 alt and they're off rating which means those those the, because they're doing the chrono farming the zones are empty after that and it, you're only going to find a handful of people or if you have a good guild but even if you have a good guild if you're not raiding people tend to drop off we chose not to raid this time because we've raided the past two or three times choosing not to raid this time meant that as soon as people got their first characters to 50 they were already bored and wanting something to do and we had a lot of people like we want to raid and i said well if you want to raid feel free to look because i'm not i'm not running raids this time around because i'm saving my energy for war warcraft classic because we are going to be raiding in wrath of the lich king um and so people went off but also a whole bunch of people went oh, i've already got the 50 i've done this before I'm, I'm gone and you see that drop off and and just having huge numbers in in classic makes it feel like a much more vibrant game than anything else i've played so that that part of it i really love too so i guess it's just a combination of all things and i also love the fact that despite the fact that you know it, it's obviously got older graphics and everything else they've again the vfx the sound everything ties in so well together and it plays exceptionally well and it's just the performance is is really really good you don't have the like lord of the rings online as much as i love it still has issues with hitching and they still have server infrastructure excuse me server infrastructure issues because of decisions they've made everquest 2 still has performance issues everquest 1 still has performance issues they just dropped the everquest 2 64-bit server recently and it's better um, but all of these games still have performance issues. World of Warcraft is the one game, apart from maybe Star Wars Republic, that I've played that just doesn't have any performance issues. It just plays flawlessly. So at the end of the day, man, I'm 20 minutes in. How did that happen? Uh, my game of 2020, my game of the year for 2022 is definitely 
World of Warcraft. Um, even though Lord of the Rings Online still holds the top spot for me as my all-time favorite MMORPG, the one that takes the cake for 2022 so far is World of Warcraft Classic. I cannot wait for Wrath of the Lich King. We are recruiting. Check out the recruitment post. See you on Poggle. Discord's down below. Have fun, everybody. Happy gaming.